Hello, Lyndon here, and uh, thank you so much for watching my videos. Thank you to all the supporters, and if you find these videos useful or it's mildly amusing, then please feel free to click on the link below and buy me a coffee. That always fills me and my wife with glee, and we dance around the house for a couple of minutes, which is good fun. Um, so I want to dive into and have a look at uh, improvisation, and I want to give you a really simple improvisational technique you can think of it like an exercise, but actually I use this at gigs all the time. Um, it's really, really powerful, really simple to understand if you know your major scale and you're comfortable with your major scale and the chord tones of that major scale. So let's have a look. So we're going to be working in the key of D major for alto saxophone, which is concert F major. And I'm going to be using it for demonstration purposes. Um, an iPad app called Session Band Jazz Volume 2, and this is set to Cool Swing. And again, it's in the key of D major for alto saxophone. But what I'm going to do for you is at the end of this video, I'm just going to let this run for a minute, and then you can record this, or maybe you can make a loop of it. I'll let it run for a minute or so. And then you can have a jam along to this as well. But I suggest you get the apps. The apps are really good. And I'm currently talking to Session Band, seeing if I can uh, make an affiliation with them. So. so I'm in the key of D major, and the notes of D major are D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, and D. And I think it always really sounds nice if you play a scale up to the ninth note. So the ninth of D major would be E. Uh, in order to be able to do this, you need to be able to hit the root, the third, the fifth, the seventh, and the ninth, which would be D, F sharp, A, C sharp, and E. So that would sound like this. down from there. Already sounds really, really nice. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start, instead of starting on the root, I'm going to start on the seventh note of the scale. So in this case, the seventh note of the scale is C sharp. By the way, top tip, if you ever want to work out what the seventh of a major scale is, just go a semitone down from the root, and there it is. So it's a nice, neat way of thinking about the seventh note and arriving at that note nice and quickly. So if I, add the, if I start and finish this pattern on the seventh, I'm going to have C sharp, D, F sharp, A, C sharp, E, and then coming back down that pattern again. So it'll sound like this. Already sounds really, really, really nice. It just sounds lovely. And if I was to put that to my backing track, Sounds gorgeous, and the part of the reason why it sounds so nice is that you're starting and finishing on not the root. So the root of any scale, major or minor, has got the most amount of resolution and the least amount of tension. So it's just like a story. If you start a story, once upon a time, a whole bunch of stuff happened, and then they lived happily ever after. The listener's brain kind of goes, okay then, thanks a lot, see you next time. So that's what you're doing when you start and finish on the root of a major scale. There's nothing wrong with doing that, but there are more interesting ways than starting and finishing on the root. So if you start on the seventh, then it kind of sounds a little bit more intriguing and you finish on the seventh. You don't start and finish in a point of resolution, just like a soap opera doesn't finish every episode with, they all lived happily ever after. They always leave it in a place of tension. And that's what we're doing. We're leaving, we're starting and finishing in a place of tension. And that's why it sounds so delicious. So that's one way that I can 
execute this. I, I don't have to do the entire thing. I could just go up to the ninth. And it'll sound really nice. Any phrase like that is just gonna sound absolutely gorgeous because you're hitting the chord tones and the chord tones are always going to sound nice, always, they're never gonna sound wrong. They're always gonna sound really, really, really pleasing. There is another way, so you could do the whole thing and there is another way that we can apply this idea as well. And I call this an incremental jam. So you start off with just the first two notes of the pattern. In this case, it would be C sharp and D or the seventh and the root. You start off just jamming on those two notes and the exercise is, and you can totally use this at gigs or when you're improvising, but as an exercise, you just try and tell a story just using those two notes. And that's actually quite a challenge to, to tell a kind of cool story. And then you would bring in the next note of the sequence. So in this case, it'd be C sharp, D, and then F sharp. So you'd bring in those three notes and play around with those notes and then add the next note in the sequence, which would be an A in this case. So C sharp, D, F sharp, and A. And you keep going until you've used, you're using more and more and more and then all of the notes. So the secret is to tell a story just using those two notes bring that third note in and explore all of the possibilities that you could possibly think of uh, and then you'll kind of feel when you've not run out of ideas but when you've explored all of the possibilities and then bring in the next note so i'll show you what i mean Sounds lovely, sounds so nice. I'm only using the chord tones. Could you see what I was doing? Just the first two, then the next one in the sequence, then the next one in the sequence. Such a good thing to do, such a great way of practicing in my opinion. You're practicing the chord tones, you're practicing your improvisational techniques, you're thinking of ideas. I mean, there's just the, there's no downside to this. If you do it with a backing track, then you're practicing your rhythmic skills as well. So when you practice in this way, you're layering up the different elements of your musicianship and you're practicing not just one thing, but four or five things all at the same time. You're you're driving yourself forward in lots of different ways, then clearly you can do this in other keys and ultimately all keys. And personally, I've gone to the effort of learning this sequence in all keys. So here it is in all of these keys that I'm mentioning are for alto. So this is in G, in C, in F, B flat and the reason that I've done that is not because I'm a 
good boy or because you know I'm trying to please the gods of sax. I'm always trying to please the gods of sax um, and I'm not trying to pass any grades or do an exam. I'm, I've learned that because it's so useful. It's so useful to me. If I ever come across a major scale situation on a chord chart or something, at least I'm prepared. I've got something to say. It's not the most complex idea that I've ever heard but it's a good practical idea which, which will completely satisfy that need and sound really really nice and that's what this game is all about. So I hope you found that useful and I really encourage you to practice this uh, particular technique for your improvisation. Please give me some feedback in the comments and uh, tell me what you'd like to hear. Feel free to buy me a coffee if you found it useful. And now I'm going to let this run for about a minute. I'm going to let the backing track run so that I'm sharing this with you as well. Uh, and if you've got any questions or you've got any thoughts about anything, just uh, um, you know, do reach out. Let me know because I'd love to hear from you. So here comes the backing track now and that's going to last for about a minute. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.